So, when we last spoke, I showed you one of the puzzles from my scavenger hunt escape room. I'm going to show you another one today, which was the magic square, which reveals a what three words location. It is, of course, in a Peli case, and this was located on the doorstep of my office, which is in a very private covered car park, so there was no risk of anyone just seeing it. I put, again, a little sticker on the front that they'd come to know and love from the, from the game. And inside was this control panel. So this consisted of a whole bunch of plugs, a keypad, and a digital display. Again, this is the one which was the least pretty. I used an offcut of some spare plastic that was available at the hack space, and I never got round to bolting the screens in place, and I felt very bad about that, and I'm sorry. Also, I could have sanded this whole control panel down and made it a little prettier. But I'm gonna show you how it works. First component of the whole thing, these plugs. Now this is just a standard off-the-shelf multi-way connector that you can get on any supplier. I think I used eBay. This is a one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is an eight pole connector. Just standard eight, eight poles and there's a plug and socket provided. Now when I gave my puzzle people the, the tools to do this, all of these were in a little uh, envelope in the first room and they had to take it to the next location. And there's some instructions that I gave them as well. I'm not completely cruel. Um, it says in the top, in the top row, right-hand column, you put the number two. Center row, left-hand column, you put the number three. And in the bottom row, number eight in the left-hand column and number six in the right-hand column. And then I've said at the bottom, plugging them in in this way means that every row, column, and diagonal will always add up two. And then I redacted it because I'm cruel. But it's essentially a magic square puzzle where every row, column, and diagonal have to add up to 15. Quick note on magic squares. I believe there are eight ways that you can assemble all the, uh, all the plugs that will add up to 15 in every row, diagonal, column, and diagonal. I had to make sure they would put the plugs in my way. And that is another reason why I put some plugs in there already, just to make certain that they would always solve the puzzle my way. So if I turn on this machine, uh, no matter what you enter, it says error 11. Uh, now these LED screens, you can make them say whatever you like. You don't have to make them say numbers. You tell them which of the, uh, it's a seven segment display, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. Seven segment display, you tell it which of the seven segments to light up. So right now in its default state, it's just a bunch of hyphens. And I said, when you press the number five, make it zero, 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 five. Then you press the number, and it, well, you press any other number, and it moves the five along one, and then puts the next digit in. And when you press another number, it moves all the row, the digits along, and puts another one in. That was actually quite a bit of tricky coding to do, uh, believe it or not. It, it took me a little while to get it sorted. Yeah, I'm sorry. Me from the past is just moaning. It was actually about an hour to an hour and a half worth of trying to figure it out. It was holding a string of numbers in memory and you put one number in when they press it and then when they press the next number, you append that afterwards. You press the next number, you append that afterwards. I had to do a few, a few bits to make sure they couldn't type too many digits in. I had to make the clear button work, but it was about an hour, hour and a half while I was sat on the sofa watching a movie. It wasn't too tricky when you really get into the headspace. Now, default state, I made it spell words, because I could. I thought it'd be a nice little effect to help with the immersion of the experience. So first off is these little eight connectors. Uh, eight? Sorry, it's got the word eight written on it. It's distracting me. These nine connectors had to be plugged in in a very specific way. Now, that was actually really easy to make, because I hard-coded it, as it were. Hard-coded. I'll show you what happens at the back. Over the years, the sticky pads have come loose. There we go. So here it is at the back end. It may look complicated, but it is not. I promise it's not complicated. These are the multi-way connectors. Now, what I did with each one of these 
I only made two connections. A random pin, and then another random pin. So what happens is, with this whole circuit, there's one wire going into the first um, socket, into, let me see now, so it goes the first socket in pin 7, and then another wire leaves from pin 8 and goes to the next socket, and then another wire leaves from there, so they're all daisy-chained, it's a series circuit. The only way it can work is if the correct two pins are connected to one another, which is done in these plugs. So in these plugs, let's take this socket here, um, pins 7 and 8 need to be connected together. So in the socket, in, sorry, in the plug, I connected pins 7 and 8 together, which means you can plug these in any, any way, but they'll only work in their correct one. And the circuit begins with, it connects to, what is this now? 5 volt supply, so one end of this connects to the 5 volt supply, the other end of this connects to analog input 0. So I simply take a reading of analog input 0 when they type the code in, and if analog input 0 is at 0 volts, they haven't put them in the right place. If analog input 0 is at 5 volts, then they have put all the units in the correct place and the game can continue. Now, I've covered these little displays in a previous video. Um, these displays are super simple, I believe. Yeah, it's Arduino library TM1637.h. So, again, it's a library. That, again, I, with all of the things I make, it's just a library that you build in. I don't make complicated stuff. I make multiple simple circuits bolted on top of each other. So, with this circuit, this will display the output, and this will display what your input is. There's also a beeper, because beepers make everything more fun. I'll show you what happens when you actually get everything correct, um, because why not, eh? Oops. So this was um, branded in the game as a decoder unit. The agents would have to find the secret code, fix the decoder unit, and enter the code into it, so it would decode it and turn it into a location. So, there we go, I'll plug that in. So if, well, actually, I'll unplug it. If I press the number seven, error 11. Plug it in, press the number seven, error 14. And they were told, again, in the instructions, error 14 means you got it right, but you ain't entered the right code. Because I didn't want people struggling, going, have I got the plugs in the wrong place, or have I put the wrong code in? Because I don't like it in escape rooms when that happens. It's really a pain. So they then had this uh, document which contained a whole grid of numbers. And the grid of numbers, you need an ultraviolet light in order to reveal which numbers I'd highlighted, which numbers you were supposed to type into the machine. Now, I don't have a UV light on me, but I do have a bright light for my camera. So it says that the correct code... 1782 I'll enter it. Error. Turns out I got it wrong. I'll try again. I've got it right this time. So once you enter the code from the piece of paper, press enter. 3673-2044-4502. Three outputs. Oh, I also went with a different color because effects. Those three numbers you would then look up in this in this book. You'd find the applicable three numbers, and they would lead you to a what three words location. Now, the location in question was actually my house. There is a gas meter cupboard on the side of my house with no gas meter in it, and they had previously been given a gas meter cupboard key. So when they went to the what three words location, that was my house, saw a gas meter cupboard, they were holding a gas meter cupboard key, they figured it out. They opened it up and was revealed the next puzzle. Fortunately, I've got security cameras on the house, so I knew they'd made it. That's the whole point of an escape room that covers a wide area. It's nice to know how people are getting on. So that's, that's pretty much this one. Um, this one was, again, a pretty simple circuit. Series circuit to make it work, digital keypad input, LED display output. Super simple. Any questions, let me know. Um, I will put some useful information in the comments if you want to go off and do something like this yourself. Good luck.
You're still here? Why? Go. Subscribe or something. That's what people do. That's what people do. They subscribe to things. Now be gone. Very important work to do.